Good morning, Evram, or should I say good afternoon, because you're uh, calling us from England. And yes. Totally yes. different time zone. Yes, thank you, Rebecca. Yes, I am in the UK. It's actually just, yeah, it's in the afternoon. Thank you. I'm yeah. happy to be here on your show. Well, I'm so happy to have you here, and you have quite an impressive bio. I know that you have an MBA from London Business School, and you're a yeah. proud mother of two young kids. You're also a transformational coach and an energy healer, and your vision is to create joyful, connected, peaceful families. And I yeah. am doing a summit, as you know, my first summit. It's called New Year, New You, and I'm helping people set specific goals and intentions in seven areas of life based on my book. And for you, I want us to talk about social and how important community is because the whole reason we met is we met at a transformational personal development training. And out of all the women there, you came the furthest. It was, I was complaining that I had to drive from LA to San Diego. And here you were <laughs> like flying in all the way from London to San Diego. And you've come to the United States. How many times would you say in the last uh, year, year and a half? How many times have you oh. come across the pond? Oh gosh, in the last, um, since February, it's probably about seven, eight times, at least. At yeah. least, right? Because I was thinking five times for the training that we attended in San Diego and another four or five times for the one that you facilitated in Boston. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking you've crossed the pond maybe 10 times in the last year. Yeah, so no, it feels easy. <laughs> Well, I have a lot of uh, people in my community that don't want to leave the house. They're like, I don't want to go to another party. I don't want to go to a networking event. I just want to stay home. And I think in this high tech era, it's so easy just to isolate and stay at home and like lose yourself and, and your phone and your computer and a Netflix and not get out and socialize. So when I, when I thought of who I knew that was an expert that, you know, was a businesswoman and also someone who understands the value of community, I thought of you. So I wanted to ask you, you know, what motivates you to go so out of your way and, and cross the Atlantic Ocean and the whole United States to come to these different uh, community events and trainings? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rebecca. This is such an amazing topic thank you for considering me for this well um what is the motivation it's it's my vision really it's my vision and um well if if i go back to the beginning i was resistant i still did that because i believed in the work i mean i'm talking about i traveled a lot but let's let's start with the transformational work we, we, that we did together so yes. i'm talking about that specifically flying from um, from the UK to the USA to, to San Diego, like 12, 13 plus hours. And, um, and I have, uh, at the time, my youngest one, Sam, was 11 months old. So that was a difficult yeah. decision to do. And my first visit was for two weeks. Anyway, so I'm giving these details because uh, none of, I mean, these were all the objections that I had. It was a long flight, my baby needed me, I had to be here, I wanted to be here at home, and so why do I really need this? And you know, all those things, I had all the objections. And um, what made the decision really to start and continue, and now I'm even more passionate about it, uh, is really um, connecting with what I want in life and how it is linked to a community, so how it is linked to contributing contributing to other people and what to create all together. So I have a vision. It's a, it's really a powerful vision that I'm truly connected with now after going through so many phases, as you know, as you witnessed as well, some parts were painful and then beautiful breakthroughs came from those painful moments. So my vision is really to create um, families that thrive with connection, joy and peace and children, next generations, are free from limitations and the old conditioning of suffering and struggle and pain. So that is my vision. And 
that is because of my own story, which, you know, we can go or it's okay if we don't. Uh, we can and, go and, a and little I bit. I'm just going to tell uh, my listeners. So when you don't want to do something, how you motivate yourself in this area or in any of the seven areas is to get connected to your vision, which I talk about in my book as your why. You have to know mm -hmm. why are you taking a 13-hour flight from the UK to uh, San Diego? Why are you attending this networking event? Why are you getting people's numbers and emails when you go to different parties and events like I talk about in the book? And that's, that's so imp important too is to get people's information because we did undergo a lot of incredible transformation together, but we could have said, you know, goodbye, have a nice life. And instead, you know, we're continuing to network and support each other as we are doing on the call. So um, I know you have an incredible story. We don't want to go into the long version, but just give us the short version so people realize, you know, why you're so passionate about what you're doing. Sure. I mean, I, I would say that my story is just like any other story. I believe that we are similar in this kind of stories. We all have our past and we went through different phases in life and almost everyone had things happen in childhood. And my, you know, the things, the events, uh, the biggest events in my life were all about family. So the family I was born into was uh, not usual in my perception. When I was a little child, I was the youngest of seven and there was a huge age gap, which, which, was, which meant I was actually a surprise. Mm -hmm. and, and then my mom passed away uh, when I was eight years old. And like as a family, uh, we were a very loving family, but on the other hand, there was, um, there was, there was lots of sadness and grief and I was everywhere. Like I try, I, I spent my childhood traveling tr between my uh, brothers and sisters because they lived in different places in Turkey. They were much older than me. And I didn't have that belonging and that I didn't feel that foundation, like a strong foundation that I, that I would feel safe and secure and connected. And that actually, that just created so many patterns and events in my life. And at the end, that is what I'm doing, helping other people to have a strong foundation for their families so they can try with connection, joy and peace and health. That's the short version of the story. And I want to add something, um, Rebecca, I love what you said, you know, the motivation is your why, which is the vision. And um, there is one important piece I found so useful. You know, we, you know, people say, people, majority of people I talk to, and it's because of the communities that I choose to be in, they have vision to impact other people and world. But it is so important to ask the question, then what, how is it going to impact me? Like, what is for me? It's not a selfish thing, because at the end, we want our lives to be joyful. We want to thrive, and we want to experience abundance in all areas. So it is so important to connect the big vision that you have in life to yourself, like you and your family, your day-to-day -day life. So right. that is other motivation. I want my children to always try with peace and connection and joy and love. And I want to leave them that foundation, that program, that belief system. So they actually grow up witnessing me and their father my husband and the communities that i'm part of that is their norm that is that is a very important piece um that that's motivates another me. thing that i like to talk about a short-term sacrifice for long-term gain yeah. so a success principle that you employed you know and in, in going to the united states so many times when you had a young baby at home is you know, you are willing to take that short-term sacrifice and miss bonding with your baby. I'm sure every hormone and every cell in your body was like, I need to be here with my baby. But your vision was the long-term is I'm going over to the United States and I'm creating a community um, with, with female entrepreneurs that are ultimately going to help me create my vision of having, you know, a connected, loving family which means a connected community, which means a connected world because the families create the communities which creates the world. So that, that drive is what got you to come to the United States so many times. And I'm so glad you did. Um, they say that 
community breeds immunity. And I know that in the past, you've worked with a lot of uh, people with terminal illnesses. I don't even like to say the word, you know, the C word, right? We all know what it is. Uh, but I believe your words manifest, so I won't even say the word. So, uh, but you could just say different terminal illnesses um, are immune deficiencies. So how does community on a cellular level boost people's immune system to help them uh, prevent diseases or get over diseases? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's such a sensitive topic. Um, well, everything we experience is a result of who we are. And that may, that is actually difficult uh, at the beginning for many people to even consider and accept, but that is really the truth. Whether we resist or accept, that doesn't change. Like that truth doesn't change. So everything we experience, including physical illnesses, are a result of our thoughts and our feelings and, and our beliefs. The communities are incredibly important to, um, to actually, uh, like build and develop uh, belief patterns and when I say belief patterns I mean like the thoughts and feelings that constantly repeat and uh, they become established patterns in our minds so if you are a part of a community who has more like a victim consciousness and beliefs about I'm powerless I can't do anything in this world everything is you know, everything is like a trauma, the world is going to a very bad place. You know, if, if that is what you hear and experience, you experience them at cellular level. Mm -hmm. So that if that is it, then, then you will be impacted by that. Your body, your mind, your heart will really receive that as truth. And on the other hand, if you are part of a community uh, like, um, you know, like you and me, Rebecca, are part of, that anything is possible. Yes, you know, there are things happening in life, but let's shift it. We have the power to impact our lives and we have the power and desire and commitment to change other people's lives, like influence them, impact them, guide them. So if that is a community that you're part of, then um, your body will start to change too. So our bodies are not separate from who we are. Like our bodies, our souls, our mind we are all one and whatever we experience um in terms of our thoughts and feelings our bodies manifest it so exactly and they have studied that your uh, your vibrational auric field extends 30 feet so whoever you're literally physically surrounding yourself with has a cellular effect. So if you're constantly, like you said, around people who are miserable or victims or, you know, in the ain't an awful club, is an ain't my job, my boss, my commute, then even if you're trying to stay positive, it's still going to affect you on a cellular level. So mm -hmm. it's really important to, and I'm not telling anyone if, if you're in a marriage with someone who's not into the self-help movement, you know, I'm not telling anyone to leave a relationship or a friendship or a marriage, but also you have to be around people who are thinking this way because it will definitely, you know, change you on a vibrational level, which changes your thoughts, which eventually changes your beliefs. And then we'd talk, we talk, we could talk all day about the neural pathways and how that is like a groove in your, in your brain that is like a highway in your brain where your thoughts are used to being either negative or positive. Eventually, you can change the neural pathways in your brain to be more positive, which affects every cell in your body and, and boosts up your immunity. So that is really great that, you know, that you have surrounded yourself. Now, how many different communities would you say you're in? I know we're in a community of entrepreneurs and uh, that's how I met you, but how many are you in different communities? I know you're in, you always talk about your little village and uh, you're not in London. So how many different communities are you in and are they all positive communities? Okay, yeah. So okay, uh, first of all, I want to say something. Uh, in, my, in my view, actually, I don't necessarily see it bad or good or right or you know wrong or positive or negative but I see it like is it aligned with my vision like, mm, I like that and because it's, at the end of the day it's a choice right I mean we can do any choice that we want if someone wants to stay in um in in, in you know living with beliefs that nothing is possible nothing good comes from life then that is a choice it's not bad 
absolutely not. It is a choice and it has consequences for the person. So that is one thing I want to say, but in terms of the communities, uh, well, the, the village that we moved into, and that's actually a great example of um, choosing the community and the vibe and the mentality that we want to, my husband and I want to raise our family. Uh, this village is, we moved to this village in, in Southeast England because we wanted our son, eldest son who is six now, to go to a specific school. Um, it's a Waldorf um, Steiner education. And, um, and we found this school which we love. Our son is thriving there. And the, the, you know, the day, day one, we made friends. It was just natural because you met, right? When you start talking, it's just natural. Because they have and, this vision for their kids that they want them to be in a progressive, you know, uh, forward thinking, like amazing school. Yeah. Yes. It's like, it's not a coincidence, it's not random that, you know, when you make a intentional choice, when you really make it consciously, then the people that you meet in that community mm -hmm. are, it's not exactly the same, but at least, you know, you have a similar vision. Mm -hmm. So the village we live in, the school community, it's amazing. And I have um, the transformational leadership community actually in San Diego and now in Boston. And I have entrepreneurial um, community, which, which is global, I would say everywhere. It, it's online, but it's global. And now I get to meet people in person as well. And I, I also um, have um, the alumni network of London Business School. And that was, that was, also, that, yeah, that was the point. That was an important milestone in my life because I was in corporate for almost 10 years, I think at the time. And it really opened my vision. So when I started uh, my MBA at London Business School, which is one of the best business schools in the world, it's considered as that way. So it's very global, open-minded. And then, you know, my possibilities started to become more and more. Until that point, I didn't see many possibilities for my career, for my future. And then, you know, it just started to expand. My vision started to expand. So those are a few communities. And um, I have um, healers community. I, I practice energy healing. And that is when we meet, it feels like Harry Potter movie. <laughs> you know, when we meet and talk about the crazy things that we try and we feel, that is a different world I love being part of. So yeah, there are a few, yes. Now, how did you hear about uh, Heartcore leadership and Shanda Sumter's work in the U.S. being from Europe? Mm -hmm. Yes, I. Um, it was about actually it was about two and a half years ago. Um, well, after I had my first son, who's six now, I knew that I didn't want to go back to the work that I was doing. I was a management consultant in compliance and risk. And, uh, but I also didn't know what I was going to do. So very, you know, very typical story. So in that search, um, I started to practice energy healing and coaching. And that was for me, I was doing it for my transformation, my family's transformation. And then naturally I started to offer it to others and I wanted to do it online. And I started to search, you know, people, um, anywhere in the world, as long as it was online and, I started to follow Shanda Sumter. I, I found her on Facebook. And in one of the trainings, free tra trainings that she did on Facebook, her son, I think who was around two or three years old at the time, he woke up. It was a very early morning training. And then she naturally, you know, just invited him and then cuddled him and then In one of the trainings that Shanda was doing online, it was a very early morning training. And then her son, who was around two, three years old, woke up and she invited him naturally to the training. So he was kind of sleepy on her shoulder and she was continuing the training. And I loved it because it was so real and it was something I wanted as well. I had a little baby and I was passionate about doing things and creating more. 
and I wanted them like I wanted to have both like I didn't want to choose either my baby or my passion so she was a great example for me and that's how I joined her programs and then I moved into leadership and many other things evolved so yeah and you can have it all and we're talking about social life you can have a social life. A lot of parents stop socializing when they have young kids and they're like, oh, we don't want to go to parties. We don't want to host parties. Like they make their whole life all about the kids. So mm -hmm. do you still attend just pure social parties without your kids? Do you host parties? Like how do you feel about socializing without your kids being that you have a mm -hmm. one-year-old and a six-year-old at home? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. I mean, uh, in terms of socializing, I think it's also a personal choice. So for socializing not is not necessarily for me, like for me personally, is not going out late or in the evenings or drinking. It's, it's good. I, I, I used to love that. But just like you said, like short term choices, trade offs for long term gains or goals and vision. So I don't go out often at night or in the evening now. Mm -hmm. And I Honestly, that I don't feel any gap in my life. I is it is it has it frozen again? No. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry, we're having technical difficulties. Keep keep going. No. I'm All right. Listening. Okay. So my my uh, mouth yes, like this because I'm listening so hard. I, I <laughs> yes, when I saw you her. like that, oh, <laughs> hanging on your every word. So I'll try to like move a little bit. All right, great, Rebecca. Yes, I do socialize. For example, my husband and I, we love dancing tango. We used to dance like crazy. Or it was an obsession. But now it's not that that often. Uh, but once in a while, like let's say a, once a month, if you know we can arrange, we arrange the childcare, we can go for dancing tango, milonga, afternoon. Or, you know, we, I invite friends a lot to home. Um, and you know, we just make lots of trips to London or, you know, local surroundings that is local social life. However, as you know, as we're talking now, I travel almost every month to wow. the USA and my husband travels a lot, um, a few times a month uh, for his business. So, um, we are making choices. Like we, you know, we see friends, let's say every weekend and we are, okay in peace with being as a family during weekdays, week evenings. And I prefer going to bed early and waking up so early, as you know, so that suits my preferences. So I can start my days super early and then create already a lot before, you know, my kids wake up. So that suits my needs at the time. Do you make any time for women friends and just have girl time where you like have, you know, coffee or go to lunch or like you said, yeah. you invite people over. So I think that's so important too for, for women to have girl time and for men to have, you know, male bonding time. So how do you incorporate girl time as they call it in the U.S. into your social life? Um, well, girl time, it, now I have new friends in this village uh, and it just feels like really I feel very bonded with them and they are they are other moms let's say and um, it's really how it works is that we have a coffee in the morning let's say before we start our days from like 8 30 to 9 30 something like that it's quick but it's good like we still ha we have that time and then we so can you go to like the local coffee shop and meet yes. the other yeah, local coffee, coffee shops and uh, yeah, local coffee shops, the school has a canteen or, um, you know, we can, ex we can just visit each other's houses as well because it's not, you know, it's the, the, the com uh, commuting is not an issue. It's just a few minutes driving from one place to another. So that makes it easy. And the other thing is, um, um, well, we, you know, it's not so often, but let's say once a month that I meet uh, some friends. It depends on where, like we arrange, maybe it's in London for a brunch or um, somewhere else. So it's not like so often, but every few weeks. Yeah. That's great. How far is and London? It's about an hour by dr uh, train. I don't drive to London much, but it's one, one hour by train. And here I want to say that uh, it's, it is important the support that you get is important my husband is like always there if I say that I want to meet with my friends um, you know 
he he understands and he supports he's with the kids and he loves being with the kids and then um you know i sometimes my sister visits uh uk we don't have any family in the uk uh, and it helps a lot i use that opportunity <laughs> when it happens and also what we created here in this community in this village is support of other families we didn't have that in the previous um town that we lived but we take other let's say couples children and you know create a play date so our children can play and then they can go and do something else and we can ask that for a few hours from other families as well so that is so that's so amazing that is yeah. so you know that's a lot of big cities in the u.s you can't ask that of people you can't so that is so you know, amazing drop my kid off for a couple hours so we can go do this like they'll be like what hire a babysitter where's your nanny Is your, you know like wow. so the fact that you have that kind of community and support mm -hmm. it's so beautiful and it is about that foundation i'm talking about right you know that connection and peace and love and joy for children because they love it they love to get together oh, and yeah. play i love it kids love to socialize. I mean, yeah. we're naturally very social and, and this people think that if they need to make a lot of money or even get into great shape, that that, that, that area of life should be the first thing to go is their social life. And I think it's so important that it feeds all these seven areas are connected, but socializing is just so important and it's so enlivening. And yeah, I'm going to I want to say something, you know, sometimes we tend to make things a little bit difficult for ourselves. Yeah. Uh, I had that in the past, like I had, I had my own agenda about how things had to happen. Like if mm -hmm. I wanted to see someone, I wanted to spend two hours or three hours. So it was especially early years and months of my motherhood, which was so completely different than what I was used to. But now even having like 20 minutes, phone call with a good friend makes a huge difference. And what I could say is that I learned how to use those time frames and those opportunities. Um, and I gave up the need to control how it's, it's got to happen. <laughs> right. But you can also create time in your calendar for socializing. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm going to book out this phone call. I knew, I know you do a lot of coaching and we're going to talk about, I forgot to ask you to offer my people a free gift. So I'm going to have you think of one on the spot, but okay. I know that you do uh, coaching and you're on the phone. So your day is very structured, but you can, you can book in, like, I'm going to have like an hour or half an hour, or even 20 minutes just to have a fun social conversation and catch up with a girlfriend and that that little uh, break from work mm -hmm. can boost you up and carry you through the afternoon with a lot more joy and momentum than if you didn't take that break. Mm -hmm. Yes, so true. And uh, yesterday, uh, another girlfriend who actually you know from our community and I, we had a we had a call in the morning, and that was a topic for. She's a mom as well and very busy, um, and our commitment for this week and going forward was to stretch ourselves in terms of our schedules that we were going to be clear in the early morning about our days and we will not negotiate like this flexibility is important but what we intend to create is clarity in our minds about our days so just like you said if i put an hour to socialize to have a coffee with someone in in, in the village in a local cafeteria that I know it's going to happen. So I'm not going to say, oh my God, you know, there's so much to do. Can we change it? Uh, can we postpone it? So that is that is that was the intention we created yesterday. And I think it's so important because life constantly like throws us so many new things. But when we are clear, uh, we can really have a clear schedule and make it happen. You're right, yeah. Well, that's actually the perfect segue to the whole meaning of my summit is how to set goals and intentions for 2020. So how would you advise my listeners? How could you break that down and how could you set goals for their social life in 2020? What do you suggest? For the social life. Okay. So again, I will start with what they want to create in, in 2020. So 
what do you want to experience, to have, to do in 2020 in general, like in life, because yeah, life is not definitely. just like your book says life has, life is just one, one big united thing that we have, right? It's not just work or family or social life. So think broadly and holistically and, and look deeply into all areas and you, it's seven in your book, right, Rebecca? So look into those areas and what do you want? And then, um, and then, you know, you, you have that vision. And I would say the second step for me is always, then who, who do you need to be to make it happen? And it means that, do you need to be um, committed? Uh, do you need to be- I'm taking notes, this is good. All right, you get a vision. You ask yourself who you need to be to make it happen. Keep going, I'm, I'm listening. Okay, so, so these are just examples. Um, uh, it's actually, you already have mastered some ways of beings and virtues, like maybe loving or generous or joyful. And maybe in 2020, for your goals, you get to step up and, and master other things like courageous, for example, or bold or um, you know, resilient, whatever it is for your goals. And you know you become clear about that and then set your goals which are aligned with those ways of being. For example, and coming to the social life, it's so important who you hang out with. Right? If your goal is, you know, for your goals, to achieve your goals, if you know that you get to be uh, courageous and outrageous and joyful, you don't want to spend your time in communities and with people who constantly talk about their fears and who are like, you know what, it's better to be invisible. Let's not draw some too much attention to ourselves. Or, you know, you don't want to spend your time with that energy. So you choose your social life. You plan your social life to create um, courage and and joy and boldness, whatever it is that you want into your life. So that would be a simple tip that I would say. And that is, say, having said that, I am traveling to Boston, I don't even know how many times in 2020, many times I can say you for different reasons. And those are the people and you and Rebecca, I, I, I really, there's a plan for San Diego as well. So those you are yeah, like those are the people that I want to spend my 2020 with because we align in what we want to create because they are fearless because they are committed they are authentic they are connected and so that is what are, I want. Yeah, you're structuring your year around the events that you're going to, which are community. I'm going to tell my listeners to go one step further to break it down. Like mm -hmm. how many times do you want to socialize every week with a girlfriend? Like how many, how many times do you want to meet a girlfriend for coffee? How many parties do you want to attend a month? How many parties do you want to host in a year? Do you want to host them once a month, once a year, once a quarter? How many networking events do you want to go to every month for your career? So you can... I like that you have the broad, you know, how do you want to be? What mm -hmm. do you want to go? And then, and then drill it down to social goals every month, every week, every year. Yeah. So that's what I would encourage my listeners to do. And I have just enjoyed this conversation. I can't wait to see you again. You're just such a beautiful healing presence, even though you're across the pond, like you're your healing, beautiful energy is just oozing from the screen. So I know I forgot to ask you to do this, but do you have any offers or gifts you want to make my listeners? Uh, yes, I do actually. I, um, I have a training. Um, I have a few things, but I'm thinking that one specific topic, um, training topic that I have would be great. And it's about, it's from uh, control to flow. Mm -hmm. And in that training, I talk about how to let go of control and to create a peaceful, joyful and connected um, families. And whether you, you know, your topic is family or not, it doesn't matter because that training applies to creating, you know, flow in your life and creating joyful, connected, peaceful, loving relationships, which is very much about your social life. So you can take everything in that training and apply into your life and create connected social relationships and peaceful and loving 
uh, social relationships. So that will be my gift. Yeah. Thank you. And how do my listeners keep in touch with you? What are your social media handles or how do you like to keep in touch with people? Um, Evrim Osgen. Well, I guess that you will put these. Uh, this, I'll put your uh, name. <laughs> they have the spelling in the notes. Yeah. yeah. So I'm on Facebook. Uh, I have a Facebook group as well, which is Your Thriving Family. But I'm on Facebook as uh, my, my Facebook page is Evrim Osgen. And um, my, just spell it out right now. All right. Okay. So E V R I M O Z G E N. And I, you can reach to me by email, like that, that is simple. So it's Evrim, which is E-V-R-I-M at EvrimOzgen.com. And yeah, just connect through email, send me, send me like um, a sentence that whatever you want to hear about and we can connect on that. Yes. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule and your family and your business to talk about social life on my first summit. I'm so excited to connect with you on the Zoom call. And I can't wait to see what we create in 2020 in our social lives and in all seven of our areas. Great. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for for this opportunity. I loved it. And I always love to have conversations with you. And I look forward to giving you a hug next time we see each other. Okay. And thank you. Thank you, everyone. And um, have a wonderful year. Thanks for listening, everyone. Bye. Bye.